While staying here at Hemingway's house, I learned to see another side of him. Not the bon vivant, charismatic, larger-than-life figure that we sort of all know, but really as a vulnerable human being who, like all of us, struggled with the same big-life questions we all have. I found it quite curious in some ways that his adventurous life, all of his brushes with death, were in some ways, in, as I think of them, in a way, an ironic way of keeping himself engaged with life, keeping himself alive. Anyway, I kept hearing the Bigwood River right behind us, and he began speaking to me in some ways. And so this poem emerged, which is in conversation with the spirit, writer to writer, human being to human being, thinking of the river as a metaphor for writing and the creative process itself, but also for the ways in which we all figuratively write our own stories to make sense of our lives. Metaphors at Big Wood River, while at Ernest Hemingway's home, Ketchum, Idaho, July 16th, 2020. Me and you, you and me, uneasy on the terrace where you once sat, witnessing the same sun you also saw rise, brushed by the same wind you last breathed. Now. I breathe your spirit, my knowing you knew this river, like every river, is a life, is a story that begins with tears of rain, or the shattered beauty of snowflakes fallen from faraway clouds we somehow know as well as ourselves, shedding the gray weight of our souls into whispers to the mountain peaks perked up like ears, needing to hear the skies, to feel they are not trapped in their towers of loneliness, and neither are we. Like them, in the creases and folds of our earthen palms, we collect our watershed into a river's voice, into a life, into a story, letting it flow through us urged downhill by the gravity of gravitas into the valley we carve with our imagination. Each run of the river, a sentence, scribbling the story of our lives, at times clear-minded and tranquil without the eddies of adjectives, at times murky, stalled by the verbs of our pain, the river often dries up with our losses. Then at times the giggling of gurgles over the stones, like commas that force us to pause and listen to the ripples of our joy. Other times the rage of whitewater rapids we fear we might not survive. Or worse, the damning of our souls we must break to let our lives' stories keep flowing steadily downstream, new chapters at every bend, twisting our way through plots of unknown fields, driven as a river, inevitably, we reach the end of ourselves and our stories. We let them spill willingly into the sea, dissolve into its eternity, giving how you gave to live, how you now live in me, in us, eternally.